But we pass on something that a lot of us like to believe and some even experience. If you've been listening to this show for any number of uh, days or weeks or months or years, uh, is the fact that sometimes they do come back. Sometimes you do have a visitation from someone who has passed on. It's not always obvious, though, who is showing up. Sometimes those who do show up is very surprising. Sometimes it's like, of all the people to come back, you came back. <laughs> it just seems to be something that occurs on a semi-regular basis for many. On today's episode, we hear about two different visitation stories from various people in one's life. One woman visited in the night by a strange man. She's unaware of who he is and why he's there. Turns out it's more of a connection with her significant other than her. And he's just hanging out to watch, see what's going on. Check in on his friend. Also, what happens to a man when the one that got away dies in a tragic accident before true feelings could ever be honestly expressed? Those stories and more today in EPP bonus episode number 392 of Real Ghost Stories Online. My name's Tony Bruski. Stay with us. Sometimes when we are visited by something or someone from the other side, questions will arise. I shouldn't say sometimes questions will arise. Always questions will arise. What is this? Who is this? Why is it here? Is this good? Is this bad? What am I dealing with? So many questions. And many times we don't get answers, but sometimes, sometimes they get specific. Sometimes they get right down to naming a name. Letting you know where they're from and why they're there. And sometimes it may not be somebody you relate to, but maybe somebody in your life. You discover they're not necessarily there for you. You happen to catch them, but they're there to watch out for someone else in your world. That's what happens in our next story. Take a listen. Hello, my name is Melissa, and I've been listening to the podcast for only a few months now, and super love it. Really appreciate your level of professionalism as an interviewer. I listen to a lot of podcasts and a lot of radio, and I truly appreciate what you're able to get out of people as you're interviewing them based on the corny of questions you always seem to be able to spontaneously come up with. I'm writing in to tell you my most interesting ghost story because I have several. A little bit of background about me. My family is from New Orleans. So the family environment and our upbringing lends itself to believing that ghosts or spirits and energy are all just part of life. Not a huge deal. My mother is and remains a very open-minded person and also very spiritual. So the fact that I'm clairvoyant and clairaudience has never been shunned by my family or my mother, which has helped me immensely in developing my skills and abilities in that area. So the way that my abilities work is, first, I feel that there's an energy around. There's a ghost around. Next, I feel the gender of the energy, if it was ever human. Then I feel whatever or not the energy is positive or negative or its intentions. The last thing that I usually feel when I'm experiencing an energy or ghost in any information about the energy that wants wants to give me. This part is completely optional to them in that moment, which means that I don't always get any details other than gender human or non-human or good or bad energy the story that i want to share with you today has to do with an experience in which i was able to get a lot of detail over time back in 2015 i moved in with my fiance into a two-bedroom apartment that we had shared with my stepmom on the weekends at the time my fiance was going to school at night to complete his master's degree the refrigerator in our apartment was starting to go out so we found a new refrigerator used online and purchased it 
Now, because the refrigerator was used, of course, I wanted to thoroughly clean it. So, one evening before my fiancé went to school, he disassembled the refrigerator for me so that I could scrub each part of it thoroughly on our apartment balcony while he was away at class. So my fiancé left the class, I got to work scrubbing the refrigerator, and as I'd finished pieces of the refrigerator, I'd bring them from the balcony through the living room into the kitchen and set them down. Before I started scrubbing the fridge, I felt a male energy, but it was very distant or general, so I thought that it was definitely a male on a younger side, not a child, but also not an old man. But I wasn't going into any detail, and I wasn't even getting any feelings as to whether it was good or bad energy, or what the intentions were. It was just buried out there, but not sharing anything else with me. I didn't think much of it and continued my night. Well, after I finished a few pieces of the refrigerator, I was bringing the last of the drawers and other compartments and from the balcony. And one of the times I was going from the balcony back to the kitchen, I came in from the balcony with pieces of the refrigerator and looked up and saw my fiance. And I was a little startled at first because I was just very into what I was doing. So it startled me to see him. Then in a split second, I realized who I was saying or seeing was not my fiance. He was in fact something else. It was a young male that I saw. It was a bit taller than my fiancé, wearing a white t-shirt and baggy faded jeans. Although at first glance, his appearance was very similar to my fiancé, he definitely was not my fiancé. And as soon as I realized that my fiancé is definitely not him, he just disappeared. I was a bit taken back by the fact that this was the first time that I'd seen an energy physically with my own eyes and not just in my mind's eye. This made me extremely curious about the history of of the apartment. So I asked my fiance if he knew anyone that had passed away in the apartment, and he said no. Over the next several months, I felt this male energy several times, always very late at night, and it was always when I was working in the kitchen, and the energy would stay a good distance away in the main hallway of the apartment, just lingering. Eventually, the energy allowed me to know, you're sharing this thought, that he was just there to check up on us, and his connection was actually with my fiance. He basically was just there to periodically check up on us and make sure everything was okay. Now, my fiance grew up in the LA area, not the super safe areas of Los Angeles, so unfortunately, he had lost quite a few friends over the years. So it was difficult to pinpoint exactly who this might be that was connected to him or attached to him and checking up on him. I haven't ever told my fiance about this attachment or connection or my experiences because he's very sensitive to energy himself, but does not embrace it and is booked out very much so. I kept all this to myself, hoping that I could somehow someday figure out who this guy was that would quite often come to check up on us. Eventually, about a year after I physically saw this ghost, he allowed me to know his name, and the name that I got was either Andy or Anthony. I knew it was a male name. It sounded younger. So I said, just checking up on us with Andy or Anthony, I mean, but again, I didn't know exactly who this was. It was no pun intended. A couple years later, my husband was retelling me a story that I actually knew quite well about one of his friends being executed by a gang member in the early 2000s in a well-known park in LA. His friend did not have any gang affiliation and was just playing basketball at the park and unfortunately was the wrong person at the wrong time. It was executed by members of the MS-13 gang. As my husband started to retell the story, I felt that Andy or Anthony energy directed to my right ear never stood so close to me before, and he literally just popped in all of a sudden as my husband started to retell the story. I never personally knew the story. It was one of my husband's friends before he and I started dating, and when my husband described how he was murdered, I felt this deep, intense sadness come into my body. The only way that I can describe it. I just had this incredibly intense, sad feeling in my chest and knew right away that those were not my feelings. So my husband told me his friend's name was Anthony. So finally, finally, all of the pieces were starting to fit together. This was his friend Anthony from the park checking in on him to make sure everything was okay. Anthony continues to visit on a regular basis over the years, especially when we'd add a new tile to our family. We got married anytime. There are big events going on or any thing big going on, times of stress, things like that, Anthony would always visit. Of course, late at night, and of course, when I was working in the kitchen, it was never a negative energy or anything like that, so I didn't worry about it. 
basically just greeted him. It wasn't until recently, I would say within the last year, that we had gotten custody of my stepson, who has his own room. It was on the weekend. He came to me in the kitchen, pretty excited, and told me that he just saw his dad in his room. I didn't think anything of what he had just told me. I just shook my head. That's when he told me, yeah, my dad is on the balcony. That's when I stopped what I was doing very slowly. With a smile, I just looked at him and said, oh, yeah, that's happened to me, too. I've seen that guy, too. Don't worry about it. It's okay. That's going to wrap up the preview portion of EPP bonus episode number 392 of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you'd like to hear the rest and find out the story of about a man that shows up in the middle of the night, startles a woman. She wonders who it is. Turns out it's uh, one of her husband's buddies. Who's dead? And then what happens when the one that got away tragically perishes in a fatal accident before true feelings could be expressed amongst the couple? Those stories and more. If you want to hear it, become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to get in on all of that. Until next time, for Real Ghost Stories Online, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.